Hey, Grace Church, Michael Campbell here, pastor of Children's Ministry. Hey, I just want to go over this Sunday's lesson that the kids are going through, that hopefully we can see how it applies to them, how it applies to us as primary discipleship makers of our home. So we are going over Acts chapter 7 today and the stoning of Stephen, the first Christian martyr, and his sermon and speech that he gives to the Pharisees. So let's dive in. Um, it's really impactful because all of the Pharisees and Jews hated Stephen because he was saying all of the Old Testament is about Jesus Christ. All of it. He is the fulfillment of everything. And they were accusing him of tearing down the temple and he was, which ironically they were the ones doing. But part of his speech that is really impactful is you're not hearing and it hasn't penetrated your ears or your hearts. So he was saying to the Pharisees and the Jewish people who were stoning him, you don't get it. You were reading the Old Testament, but if it's not even penetrating your ears and it definitely hasn't penetrated your heart. If you pay close attention, all of these writings are about the person and work of Jesus Christ and they hated him for it. Um, another part of the lesson that I want to encourage us is not the first words that he says describing the different characters of scripture, but actually the last words, because they mirror the life of Jesus Christ profoundly. When he was persecuted, what did he do? Jesus, when he was dying on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. And in the same way, Stephen here says, forgive them. I think that could be challenging, especially for us as adults, for those who have persecuted or wronged us or have slandered us, you name it. How do we respond as Christians? Are we so quick to show grace and mercy towards those who have wronged us? Or do we typically go to wanting to show vengeance on those people and stand up for what is right? And that could be challenging to do as a Christian. But the most important thing I think we should do when we're getting persecuted is to pray for them because, because God uses the prayers of his saints to accomplish his will. So if you want somebody's heart to change, one, I think you should pray for your own heart, but you should also be praying for their hearts that when we pray, we are not doing it to um, change God's mind at all, but rather when we pray, we should be doing it to change our hearts and how we see others and how we share the love of God on a daily basis. Because ultimately, that's what the church is. It is heaven here on earth, that God is in heaven, in earth at the same time, through him, his body of Jesus Christ. That's what the church is. So how do we love well? Um, I think Stephen was doing that by praying for them and asking for forgiveness for them. And most importantly, we need to be bold in our faith. He knew what was happening, but he didn't backtrack about what he was talking about, about the gospel. He continued to stand firm in his faith and hopefully we as parents and leaders of our household can, can be challenged to do the same and lead our kids in a way that's saying, when people come against you, how do you stand firm in your faith? So here are three questions that you can ask and hopefully just engage your children um, for this Sunday's lesson and, and being able to, to kind of see their hearts a little bit and how we respond to the story. So the first question is, what blessings do we look forward to as followers of Jesus? What blessings do we look forward to as followers of Jesus? The second question is, have you ever faced suffering or persecution because of your faith? How did you react or how would you react? I think as leaders, this is a really good chance for us to be vulnerable because we've all been persecuted for our faith. And if we haven't, then are we actually living a faith-filled, bold life? Last question, do you ever feel afraid or embarrassed to talk about Jesus? Why or why not? So hopefully you, you were encouraged by this story. I love it, um, but I am praying for you and hope these conversations go well. But until next week, God bless and take care.